Okay. So I'm getting rid of the Orion. Um, it's been a pretty disappointing experience um, so far. But let's start with the good stuff. Uh, the 190 motor, once you get the decompression spring working correctly, um, and you get the OO Racing CDI on here, uh, and that retards the ignition timing when the engine starts so that you don't get that nasty pre-ignition and that kickback which is snapping people's starter chains off. Um, so this, this CDI retards the ignition timing when it starts and then once the engine is running it, it puts the timing back to its normal curve. Massive game changer. If you have one of these 190s, you can only get that, that CDI box from OO Racing in the UK you have to get a U My UK mailbox. It's a service you pay for because OO Racing will not ship that CDI box to the US. So what they do is they ship it to a place in the UK called My UK Mailbox, and then My UK Mailbox ships that package to you in the United States if that's where you are. Um, this CDI box with the switch to turn the rev limiter on and off and also the 17% uh, percent extra uh, decompression release spring. It was about a hundred US dollars to have that stuff shipped here. That product is absolutely amazing. However, uh, the big issue with this thing that started, it's got about 70 some miles on it now, uh, 71. The biggest issue that started around mile 60 is it started um, missing at high RPM, um, kind of like a, bla a bad spark plug cap or a bad spark plug. Um, it would only rev out to a certain point. And you could put it in fifth gear at 20 miles an hour and, and whack the throttle wide open and it would pull up to a certain RPM and then it would just, it was almost like it hit a hard rev limit. So um, that was one of the things that made, made me replace the CDI, which did not fix it. Um, I got rid of the stock uh, ch Chinese coil, uh, put a good TTR 125 coil on here. Um, also replaced the spark plug with a CR9 EIX plug, which is an upgraded plug. I went up on the jetting, I went down on the jetting. Um, absolutely cannot tune out that, that misfire where it just, it won't rev past, let's say about 8,000 RPM. Um, so I think the only thing left at this point is a stator. Um, it's probably gonna need a stator, which is not a big deal. Stator's 50 bucks. Um, it's maybe an hour, hour and a half to replace it. Um, but I just have too many projects going on right now. And the big reason I'm selling this bike is um, I just, I'm really dis I'm disappointed in Orion Power Sports. When I bought this bike, it was listed as having adjustable compression and rebound. Um, right in the listing, it said that. And I'll insert, hopefully, a picture here. Um, when the bike arrived, I have rebound adjustment up here, and this is a 2022 model. On the bottom of the fork, there is no compression adjustment. There is just a, a cap down here. So I emailed Orion Power Sports and I said, hey man, I bought this bike. It's supposed to have adjustable compression and rebound, which was one of the big reasons I bought this thing. Um, because I don't know of any other 16, 19 bikes other than a CRF 150R that had that function. Orion Power Sports responded and said that uh, the bike didn't have that function. And I thought, well, that was kind of weird. So I refreshed the web page about 10 minutes later, and they had changed the web page to no longer say that it has adjustable compression and rebound. 10 minutes after I emailed them and said, hey, this bike is supposed to have adjustable compression and rebound, I have a screenshot of this. Um, their official response through email was that, I got somebody on, guy's on his way to pick this thing up. Um, their official response through email was that this bike has adjustable compression by draining or changing the level of fork oil as well as changing the weight of fork oil. And this is the biggest 
BS response ever. And this is really a shame that they take care of their customers this way. Because if they would have said, hey man, we screwed up on the website, we accidentally put that it had adjustable compression, but it doesn't. And, uh, you know, here's a t-shirt, here's some stickers, here's some something. Just, just admit some type of fault and, and do something for me. And I would have fixed this bike and continued to ride it and probably sold them some bikes. But um, the situation gets even worse because, you know, at this point, they, they sold me something that's not what they said it was. I tried to, you know, say, hey, can you help me out? And they pretty much told me to go pound sand. So at this point, I opened up a case with PayPal because I had purchased the bike through PayPal. And I said, hey, um, you know, this, this bike is not what I paid for. Um, what can you do? So Orion Power Sports dragged their feet for about a month. This bike's been sitting in the corner of the garage forever. Um, finally, they got back to PayPal and said, this bike does have adjustable compression and the way that you adjust it is by changing the fork fluid and changing the height of the fork fluid. Now, there is no other motorcycle manufacturer on the planet that I know of. Any, anybody that's known Suzuki, Yamaha, Kawasaki, Honda, any of the Japanese or European bikes, if it says it has compression and rebound, it has it right on the fork. You'll see it here on this KTM, one's rebound, one's compression. Um, none of the other bikes here have it. Um, these are all old school forks. Um, but even on the Kawasaki here, you got compression here up on the top and there's a rebound screw on the bottom. You probably can't see it. Nobody does that. So I'm not saying that this is a bad bike. I'm not saying don't go buy one. Um, I'm just saying that Orion made a mistake on their website. I called them out on it, no big deal. Mistakes happen. Everybody does it. I called them out on it and they just refused to admit any type of guilt whatsoever. So um, I don't want it. I, I don't want to be associated with a company like that, that, I mean, at the end of the day, they're a business. They're there to make money. But if they're not going to take care of their customers, I can't say that this is a good purchase. I can't say that this is a good buy. I just can't do it. And for $2,000, which is about what this cost shipped to your door, um, I would go out and buy a, a used CRF 150F, not an R instead, or a KLX 140, or a TTR 125, or any of those bikes, and just go on Amazon, get a $30 headlight and a tail light, and put it on there. Um, I got one off of Amazon right here. I actually got a couple of them. These are just $30 headlights that you can get right off of Amazon, wire them into your battery with a switch, make your own headlight and tail light. Um, I just, you're, you're, you're going to be so much better off in the long run if you get a used Japanese bike as opposed to this Orion. And I'm not cutting down on the Chinese bikes. I mean, we'll call it for what it is. They don't have the same quality as a Japanese bike, but you're not paying the same price. For instance, if you look at this chain here, I'll get down here. Um, this sprocket is out of round. So if I look at my chain tension, it's pretty, that's, that seems like pretty tight there. Like you would think, well, that's too tight. I better loosen that up. If you spin this, you'll notice now that's like almost too loose and it's just poor, it's just poor, um, poor machining. Look at how tight that is. Look at how loose that is. Look at that. That's too loose. I mean, that's almost loose enough to come off the, the counter shaft sprocket and throw a hole in the case and there it gets tight again. So I did replace this chain. This is an RK chain. This is not the stock chain. Um, this is a good quality chain. So this sprocket is, is out of round or the hub is out of round or something is out of round. Another issue that I had is when I got it out this spring after sitting all winter, the back tire was locked up. And the reason the back tire was locked up is because the brake fluid was closing the caliper. And the reason the brake fluid was closing the caliper is because there was no slop in this lever. Um, 
I had it adjusted perfectly when it was cold in the winter time, say 30 degrees. Once it got to 70 degrees in the garage here, this pedal would not move at all. It was solid. The back, the back tire was locked up. So keep in mind that the Chinese tolerances are not what the Japanese stuff is. So um, if you're going to ride this in the summer and then you're going to ride it in the winter, you're going to have to adjust this brake. And if you're not on top of it and it's really close and you're out riding this thing, once that brake caliper heats up and that fluid heats up, your back tire is going to lock up. So you have to keep these brakes adjusted perfectly for the temperature that you're riding in. Um, the DNM rear shock is actually really nice. Um, oil changes are easy to do. I mean, the 190's got a lot of power. It's, it's, it's a good motor and I really want, I wanna give this bike Like, I wish I could give it more praise and more approval because I want people to have more options than spending, a, you know, $12,000 on a KTM. Um, so I love options like this because for two grand, you know, it's like, man, even if you could get, let's say, 3,000 miles out of it and junk it and buy a new one, well, that's no big deal. But um, there's just too many too many issues with this thing and there's too many tolerances that are that are just not close enough for for me to feel comfortable with and a poor electrical connectors with no sealant on them and and um you know the air box there's there's absolutely nothing to protect your air filter here um uh, where the heck is it i had made here it is i had took taken a coffee can and threw it on here when I was riding, um, just to keep the, just to keep the mud and the water and stuff out of there. You know, um, how in the hell would you expect to even ride this thing in the rain or the mud or anything? I mean, so I don't know. Uh, my final thought is, um, it's a fun bike to rip around on, but if I got two grand and I'm going to spend it on something, it's definitely not going to be this. Like I said, I, I'd buy a used. Uh, Japanese CRF 150F, KLX 140, TTR 125, DRZ 125, TTR 230, uh, CRF 230 I got back there. Amazing bikes, they last forever. Um, but the functions that you get on this, like the headlight, the taillight, the blinkers, um, it's just, it's, it's not worth it, man. Save yourself the time and grief and just buy something else so guys on his way to here to pick this bike up he knows that it's got a running issue told him it's probably a stator seems like a good guy i'm sure he'll be able to figure it out and um maybe get some get some good time out of it so that's it she's moving on